Hey guys, this is Melanie Grant. Let's take a quick video and look at how we use 3M when we're looking at our CPT or HCPCS coding for, for professional base coding. I'm going to share my screen and show you where you can find this valuable resource and how to get started. So as I share my screen, I've entered into our class in my learning mode. I can go in here in any of my coding classes and find access to 3M through my coursework content under my student resource folder. In here, in each of your coding classes, you will have access information and a link to our current access for 3M. 3M is the name of an encoder that is used online to look up various different codes, including CPT, HIGPICS, as well as ICD-10, CM, and PCS. It also has some really great valuable tools, which I'll show you in just a moment. This is just a short review video on how to use it for looking up specific codes in CPT and HIGPICS. Make sure if you haven't looked at 3M before to take a look at our other videos reviewing this product. So here are my student resource information. I can see the current information that tells me what 3M is, how it's used, and most importantly, my current login and password. This is shared throughout all of our CNM classes, and this does change at least once or twice a year. So you'll want to copy and save this information or write it down somewhere useful. The next page takes you to the link which will actually pop up as an automatic uh, external web page from your class. If it doesn't, you should see this view here, which says open a new window. You may need to enable uh, the browser to allow pop-ups, otherwise you'll just be stuck on this screen here. Usually, if pop-ups are not allowed, you'll see something here in your uh, web bar. Once you've logged in, Oftentimes, 3M will save your login information, especially if you've set it up in your browser. I've done that with my Google Chrome browser, so it automatically logs me in as soon as I click on that link. This right here is going to be the full view of the additional pop-up that comes up. Sometimes this will be a little bit smaller, so it may look like this. I like it in big view because it helps me to see everything that's in here. So we're ready to get started. This is the beginning stage of 3M. Just a couple of reminders for those of you that haven't seen this in a while. We have our resources here in the top corner, which will open up in a separate window to pull up various information that's very valuable to us, especially as new coders. We have here on our integrated code books, our ICD-9, which is not used currently, ICD-10 CMP and PCS integrated code books, and current procedural terminology integrated code books. What that means when we say integrated code books is that you can click in here and go directly to a specific coding section and look at the information that is on the coding page. Those of you in 1015 or who have taken 1015 here at CNM may recognize this view as we've used some of these pages in order to provide references to some of our coding. When you're navigating in your resources, you want to click the back buttons here or a uh, previous screen button. So the two differences, one of these will just go back to the pre next or previous topic, whereas the back will actually go back where you were at previously. That can be a bit confusing, but it's pretty easy to get down once you look at it. Other references that we have in here is the AMAA CPT assistant. This is very valuable, especially to new coders as you're trying to determine certain information regarding your coding. This is broken down based off of the different types of procedures that you're coding. So depending on what you're looking for, you can actually come in here and mark, uh, find your, your descriptor alphabetically and look for the information. This is also a resource that will be linked to the code. So if you'd rather just code it out and then look at the resources to see what's available, that's what I personally prefer to do. You have a pharmacology drug reference here, medical dictionary, anatomy appendices, which is very valuable when you're trying to determine uh, different definitions uh, for different body parts and looking at different coding breakdown of coding descriptors versus provider descriptors. These can be very helpful. 
Your coding reference plus, you do have a coding clinic for HICPICS. What a coding clinic is, is this is the little question marks that will pop up when you have a specific item that you're looking at. When you're looking at coding clinics directly uh, from the American uh, Health, Health Association, you want to pull up the information based off of the most recent quarter when, I, when it's possible. Other times you can also look at some of the older information because it will still be relevant at times. So if I was looking at the new vaccine code for CPT, this would give me all the information I need to know based off of the coding guidelines and new codes. So those are some cool tools that you can look at. You also have an anesthesia crosswalk, which we talk about in our class. And so I'll leave that at, uh, for a later point. Um, diagnostic and lab test, if you're coding for radiology or laboratory, this is a super great reference. Anything with Mosby's manual or even Dr. Z's radiology is one of your best tools. Dr. Z is also uh, one of your best tools for cardiovascular coding. And then of course you have your Merck manual, which I have recommended in many of my classes. Last but not least, we do have the HIPPIX level two, 3M, uh, which in this particular case, we don't have available here uh, with CNM, but it is a, uh, one of the resources that you may have as you work for other areas, as well as some of these others here. So you can click on them. Don't worry about anything being, if it's not available, just back out. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we would use 3M for HICPICS and CPT coding. First thing I always start off with is I choose my gender to be other and a patient who is age 33. This will help me keep from running into edits that may apply based off of male and female patients when I'm just looking up codes. And age 33 is a pretty good rounded middle age number that will not run into any issues with pediatrics or geriatric coding. However, if your patient is a pediatric or geriatric, especially if they are over the age of 65, there are specific Medicare services you will want to pull up. And so that age will need to be entered appropriately per the patient you are looking up. The only other thing I wanna change over here is where it says product DRG finder, because I'm not looking for DRGs, which is based off of uh, payment systems for inpatient. I instead want to find information for my code finder on HICPICS and CPT. So there's a couple of different ones here. Take some time to make sure you select the correct one, which is the HICPICS slash CPT code, uh, CPT finder because that's what we're looking is we're just finding the codes. We don't want any additional insurance information or relative information that would be listed if we were sending them inpatient. So when I hit continue, a couple of things you wanna pay attention to. In this top corner here where it says ICD-10 summary, when you click add procedure, make sure that says CPT procedure. If it says ICD-10 PCS procedure, you are in the wrong place and you'll wanna go ahead and just cancel out and start a new patient. At this point, I'm ready to start. I can type in specific um, information that I know will pull up for HICPIX codes, such as ambulance. And when I enter these, I wanna pay attention to the types of codes that are showing up. For ambulance, there aren't any CPT codes, so all the codes that you see referenced will include a number after the first letter. Pay attention to the different types of services here and make sure you select the correct code for an ambulance service. Select the information pertaining to the actual service itself and any information you may be given. Once you've selected the code, you can click on and right click to see some of those references that we saw earlier, such as the AHA coding clinic for HICPICS. This will give you a different additional services that you may not have looked at when you were looking at the most recent quarter. And this particular one being from fourth quarter 2012, pulling up with this code means that it is still active. This particular clinic gives us information on what ambulance services are, the different types of levels of services, how they're defined, some of the terminology and code definitions. 
and even gives you additional codes if this wasn't the correct code that you wanted. I can hit back or I can just close out of the reference menu. I can right click again and I can see there's no additional references for this particular code. In my opinion, it's a little harder to look up HCPCS codes in 3M. However, this is a great tool when you are looking up codes for CPT coding. For example, if I was doing a uh, exploratory uh, cystoscopy, I could just type in the term, identify uh, if there was a cystotomy or cystoscopy. Did I go in through an opening in the bladder? It gives me additional abbreviations that I would not find in CPT um, every time. And then it gives me all the breakdowns of the information that I would need. So if I was doing a, an exploratory cystoscopy, I would wanna look and see if there was any specific information such as transurethral through the urethra, diagnostic only, which is exploratory, and it would give me a specific code for my procedure. I can click on by right clicking. And in CPT, we have a few more references. We have the AMA CPT assistant, as well as the procedural terminology that we looked up earlier. We also have a coder's desk reference for procedures by Optum 360. AHA coding clinic for HICPICS pulls up and references. So I wanna look at that when I see something like that. I can look here and see, okay, endoscopic procedures. And I know that this is for HICPICS. So this would be referencing times where my codes may apply to different scenarios. And so I can find cystoscopy here in the middle. This is just kind of a generalized overall HICPICS and CPT reference for any endoscopies. So there's a lot of really great information there. Once I'm confident with the code that I've selected and I've looked at all of my references that are relevant to me, I can go ahead and select this code for my coding. When you're using 3M guys, make sure that you also pick up your CPT code book or, and or your HICPICS code book to verify all of your codes. 3M is an excellent resource and it can be used in lieu of a code book if you don't have it on hand. And in some offices, it's required to be used either as 3M or another code or similar in order to select the codes into their system. This is again, a great resource, but always verify your codes as we are learning and we should learn in both our code books as well as online encoders. That's all for this video. We'll see you soon.